Welcome to the OG pod. I am Scott Bernstein. We're going to do a quick hitter edition. Um, Some news coming out of Philadelphia uh, related to the Junior Black Mafia. And from that, I want to tell a story about uh, some, an altercation uh, from about 25 years ago that uh, I don't know if a lot of people know about. So we all know that the uh, Bruno Scarfo crime family and the African-American underworld in Philadelphia have always worked very close together, dating back to the 1970s, first with the Philly um, Black Mafia, Black Brothers Incorporated um, through, the, through the Bruno Scarfo era. And then as Joey Merlino and his crew took over um, in the early 90s, the junior Black Mafia, which were the, uh, the teenage Aaron boys for the 1970s guys that were coming into adulthood in the 80s during the crack era, they created an offshoot of the Philly Black Mafia known as the Junior Black Mafia or the JBM. So um, on Gangster Report this week, uh, I wrote a story about the history of the relationship between Junior Black Mafia and the Bruno Scarfo crime family. So go check that out at www.gangsterreport.com. Um, but it should be noted that this year you had a former shot caller of JBM, Kevin Bowman, they go, uh, went by the nickname K Black, uh, was released from a life prison sentence. He's back in Philadelphia right now. It served 33 years um, for a JBM related murder from 1989. Uh, his attorney worked tirelessly to get his uh, appeal in front of a judge who tossed it out back in. March for prosecutorial misconduct and judicial error. From researching Kevin Bowman and the late 80s, early 90s connections or ties between JBM and the Merlino crew, which there were a lot. This, this group worked together um, uh, much better and uh, more intertwined and more money made than the, uh, the 1970s group. Uh, that was kind of a situation where Angelo Bruno um, wanted his guy, Long John Monterano, to work with the original Philly Black Mafia, the, the Black Brothers Incorporated, um, on drug deals, but uh, they weren't as, um, the rackets were not as layered, um, the interests were not as interspersed. When the Merlino crew came up, and took power, they had a lot more in common with the junior uh, Black Mafia guys. Uh, one of the big JBM guys, one of the founders, Tracy Mason, who goes by the nickname Tasker T, grew up on uh, Tasker uh, Street, Tasker Avenue in uh, South Philly. Most of the, the JBM and Black Brothers guys were from uh, North Philly or West Philly, but uh, uh, Tracy Mason came from South Philly, worked in the Atlantic City casinos in the 80s, and got very close to a lot of these Italians and was really able to bridge the gap, became very close to Joey Merlino. If you Google Joey uh, Merlino and Tracy Mason, uh, you'll find a dozen photos over the years. Uh, so what I didn't know, and I guess this wasn't a secret, but I, I've recently been made aware of it, was in late 19, the late 1990s, as the first run of the Merlino crew was coming to an end, and they were about to go to jail for about a decade. And you had a lot of the JBM guys that were going to start filtering out of prison because um, they had been in uh, for a while. You had a situation that could have turned violent where you had JBM and the Merlino crew uh, at odds. And it got so bad that in February of 1999, you had JBM members bum rush Joey Merlino's house, his mansion in the Brittany Estates uh, neighborhood, where a group of uh, JBM members showed up unannounced, um, pushed their way into the house, and the police were called. Um, I, I don't know the specifics of it, but I can imagine that the Merlino crew would see this as a, as a huge slap in the face, a huge disrespect. Um, I think that the, the brewing tension was related over the way that money was being chopped up in, in shakedowns, um, gambling, and, and drug affairs. But uh, Trent Picard, T.C. Picard, whose brother Julius was 
um, one of the major JBM guys, but uh, Julius was killed in 1995 and his brother kind of took over his, his, um, his, his, his JBM crew. Uh, but uh, TC Picard um, was the person that was leading um, this attack, I guess, on, on Joey Merlino. Um, but luckily for both the, the JBM and the Merlino crew, Tracy Mason was coming out of prison that very month. So like, I think it was two weeks after this incident at Joey's house, Tracy Mason came, came out of prison and he squashed the beef. Um, and from that point forward, they've been um, working together just like they had been before that. But it's interesting to note that if it wasn't for Tasker T, Tracy Mason, the OG from the JBM, uh, has nothing but love and respect from the upper echelons of the Bruno Scarfo crime family, the Joey Merlino crew. They love uh, Tracy. Got another, another uh, Benny Goff, Beamer Benny, um, were guys that they were very close with in the JBM. And, and Tracy Mason made it all good. But it's interesting to note that in between these uh, these eras of, of, uh, of flourishing relationships or flourishing relations between JBM and the Philly Italian mafia, there was this one patch of unrest, but, uh, just wanted to, to share it. Um, and say that, you know, Kevin Bowman is out of prison now. He, he, he was, uh, for a very short period of time, he was a street boss of JBM before he got locked up. Um, but, uh, he's out. You know, congratulations to him and his attorney for, for working so relentlessly to get him out. And if I, I read through the case. It was a dirty case. Um, they allowed the star witness had written uh, five statements to the police, only signed one of them. So only one of them he would put his name to. But the judge in the case, this is just you know, one of a myriad of, uh, of errors that were made that deprived Bowman of getting a fair trial. Uh, out of those five statements, only one of which was signed, all five were, were uh, put in front of the jury to, to consider, as well as uh, a lot of documents that um, did not make their way in discovery to the defense, one of them being uh, a guy that looked like he admitted to being involved in this um, that had nothing to do with the guys that got arrested. Uh, there were some ballistics um, evidence that looked like it was manipulated. So Kevin Bowman is free. And the not you know, and I and I'm sure Kevin Bowman has gone and and is gone off into the sunset and, and is and is in his JBM retirement. So I don't want to um, imply that 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 Black Bowman has anything to do with what's going on right now. But right now, I do believe and I do have good sourcing that uh, what's left of JBM is still working very closely with the Philadelphia Italian Mafia, the Merlino crew. So. Just giving you an update on that and telling an interesting little story about back when things weren't so copacetic. For Jimmy, he'll be back on the Long Form Podcast later this week. And for Benny Behind the Glass, who's, who's our MVP, keeping us moving, keeping us the train on the track, moving at 1,000 uh, miles an hour. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, out.